Howdy guys. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys, you know, some progress on the Firewatch Tower, something I've been working on for quite a while here and there, you know, on and off kind of thing. Um, and so I, I restarted it and um, this basically is the Firewatch Tower from the game Firewatch, a game I really like to play and um, I really like the look of. And so I really wanted to start to replicate, you know, the look, uh, but also make it procedural as well. And so um, this is basically where I'm at. And so uh, to dive in really quickly here, I just want to show you some of the, the cool tricks of this guy here. Um, if you go into the tower node, um, all of this starts from a single grid. And the way that I do things like the stairs and the, um, the tower um, is by using a copy transform node. So I use this copy transform node and I basically lift it up and then uh, per copy, I basically scale it down a certain amount, right? Um, for the stairs itself, uh, the trick here is to basically for every single copy is to rotate it 90 degrees. And uh, the reason why that works, or the reason why that's cool is because then you can use a um, add node, right? And you can skip every fourth point basically. And that gives you a nice spiraling uh, curve to use for the uh, stairs and so I actually have a little note here that basically goes and builds the stairs for you right and so if you dive inside there um, all I'm doing really is just I'm blasting one of the particular um, curves you can use whatever whichever curve you want you know one or two or three right from that whole thing and you'll get the stairs generated for it right so this whole network right here will go through and uh, generate those stairs for you so some cool techniques in there I'm still working on it um, here and there's but definitely a side project for me um, but I, I do actually like working on this on this thing there's lots of uh, really cool techniques in here and I, I really want to make it so that you know we have all the props and stuff inside um, and really develop a nice set of uh, HCAs and uh, tools here inside of Houdini to uh, create these types of uh, props another cool technique that um, I did was the uh, shingles for the house over here and so I need to find it again. I need to organize this stuff all back up. Um, but for all the patrons out there, you guys have access to uh, the files so you can sift through it. Yeah, here we go. Here's the roof. Uh, so basically, um, I come through and let me turn on my wireframe. Uh, I go and create the roof just by extruding the top grid up there. And then I divide it so many um, rows basically uh, using a divide node here and so I just use some expressions there to go and divide that stuff uh, and then basically I go through and I have this side switch in here so I have this loop that loops through and creates the actual uh, shingles for you um, and what I'm doing is I'm using this uh, side switch which is just a regular node uh, to, to determine um, if the current incoming polygon right is larger in the x direction or in the z direction then I switch and basically subdivide it uh, based off of that, right? And so um, once you run it through the entire loop, you get this. And then I have this group by range just to kind of randomly select tiles that should be, or shingles that should be darker. Uh, ended up working quite well. So from there, um, I also am uh, making sure all this stuff is UV'd um, as I'm building it. You'll notice if you sift through the, um, the graph here, I have this, where is it, this HDA that I built, yeah, this wood plank, which basically is used throughout the entire um, uh, node network. This basically will, is what's responsible for, you know, creating all the posts and anything that's a wood plank, basically. But the nice thing about it is it's automatically generating um, all the UVs for me, right? Um, so I can uh, put it all into a, uh, a texture sheet. Right, and so if I were to actually go into the final deal here, you can see that all the UVs are laid out um, into a texture sheet, so I can use those guys. And I basically am creating all these uh, textures, these trim sheets inside of uh, Quixel Mixer here. And so the technique to do that, to create these um, trim sheets here, is to create a, a mask. And I just use this position gradient, and then you basically can, let me actually hold down shift here. You can basically use that to determine where it goes. Usually you put it at some sort of defined value like 
0.5. In this case, let me actually do that. There we go. Then hold down shift. Yeah, so that's how you can do that. Um, let me open a couple of the others here. So I have like the accessory sheet. I don't want to save that guy. So this one it has all the uh, the texture for the shingles and all the cement stuff or anything that's cement. And then I have another version of wood. So I have two wood sheets for this guy that I created in here. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. It's working out well. And so that one little HDA that is creating all those wood posts is uh, really helping me with all that stuff. There we go. So let me jump back up. So anyways, I just want to do a really quick run through. I didn't really want to um, you know, do a full tutorial on this just yet because I'm uh, not totally done with it. And so uh, just kind of a sneak peek. Like I said, all patrons um, have access to these files so you can see how I'm doing it. Um, hopefully at some point this coming year I will have a new uh, course. I really want to do like all the terrain and like foliage using the latest stuff on Houdini 18.5. So anyways, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, if I were to change stuff, something like, let's put it to like a total number of three here, you can see that it's changing as well. Um, if I were to change like the tower height here to something like four, or I said three was my max there, uh, you're going to notice it's not super real time. Um, and that's just because um, I'm also UV mapping everything. I also have AO turned on for this, but you can see that the stairs are following it. Everything is procedurally done. And so, um, yeah. Super cool stuff. You can change the footprint scale for like the building up here. Just gotta let it process. Now, one thing I wanna do is I want to basically uh, make it so that um, you have the option to switch off the UVs and all the AO and stuff. I mean, currently you can switch off the AO, it makes it go a little bit faster, but the UVs um, definitely are the things that are taking the longest. And it's usually these uh, UV layout nodes that take the longest. And so I wanna put in a switch for all that stuff. Let's put this tower height down, back down to like 2.5. So yeah, there we go. Um, if you are interested in the project, uh, definitely go up to the IndiePixel Patreon and uh, check it out. Thanks so much.